I'm a dancer. Uh, but sexual harassment can happen in any workplace. The industry of actors, singers, dancers, photography, model. It can happen even more because you're in the industry of beauty. The camera is on you and they think whoever is on the other side, they could take advantage of you. They, they know you depend on that job. What I want to say is I I've experienced sexual harassment. Uh, I've experienced violence in the home. As I said, my father beat my mother on a regular basis. My mother would beat me, so it, it's very traumatic. It's... and it steals your life. I put my own father in jail. I was 20, you know, probably the age of many of your models, actors, you know, starting out, or... And I was so scared. I was so scared, and I, you know, and I... I remember saying, like, Sabrina, how can you do this, you know, but... I hope my truth it, it gives courage to your um, to, to your listeners. So if you can come up with a checklist for somebody that can say, hey, these are the things you got to mark off before you work with somebody, what would that checklist look like? I want to say to your to your listeners, actors, singers, dancers, uh, photographers, uh, models. What I really want to get started with is just to know a little bit about the background about you, um, the person that you are, the industry that you're in and why you're in it. Just get a little bit of a backstory about you, just if you can explain to us kind of like a two minute, just synopsis about you. Sure, sure. Thank you so much, Isaac, for this opportunity. We greatly appreciate it. Um, the, actually, I, I've, had, I've had enough therapy uh, for quite some time now to not be shy to talk about or to state the fact that I am a, uh, a survivor, I should say, of violence. My father beat my mother on a regular basis. My mother would beat me. So I know firsthand how difficult difficult it is to live in that type of environment. Uh, and my, my business really started as a one-woman show. I'm a dancer. And I wrote, choreographed, and performed a one-woman show called Home Sweet Home? Question mark. And I play different women being abused. She goes to her good place. That's where the dancing comes in. But then she's pulled back into the terror of violence. Uh, the show ends really strong, really empowering. And I did a lot of research for the show. And Isaac, I couldn't believe the statistics that I was finding. So I said to myself, I need to make this into a business, a bona fide business with products and services that could really help people. So that's how Oh So Safe was born, really, out of this one woman show. You you mentioned the the show, the Home Sweet Home, and how the importance of playing different roles, correct? Of like different women, different roles in the types of areas that they live in. Why was that so important for you to create? I wanted to really reach out to all sorts of people in the audience. That way they could say, Oh wow, she's playing me. Oh wow, I'm that person. Oh wow that I had that situation a couple of years ago. So I wanted to unify and I wanted to be very relatable. So I played the, I play the single girl working at Starbucks. I play uh, a mother with children. I play uh, this wife who has an abusive husband. Uh, I play a child calling for help. So, uh, and then I, I play other characters and this could also cross over to men. So whether it be male or female, the victim, vic the victim state can happen either way for males and females, and it's horrible either way. So that's why I played different, p d even different economic status. Like I played a rich wife. I played a not, you know, a student who has no money. Uh, so that way it's relatable in, in the industry that we're in. And, and I love that you're, that you teach about this subject and it, it's very important and it's very relatable to a lot of people. And, um, kind of the question that I have to that is a lot of people are very scared to, to, to reach out or to talk about something that's happened to them. Right. And so what message would you have directly to those people who maybe have been through some type of abuse, especially in the creative industry? I know in our industry that we're in, we have a lot of things happen in film sets. We have a lot of things happen with photographers and models. Um, the women in the industry or the, even the males as well is what message do you have to those people who they had something happen to them, but they, they don't know how to reach out or what to say or how to go about it. Right. And I'm so glad that you brought this up because 
it's very taboo, right? It's a very taboo subject. So the more we talk about it, the more uh, it'll get resolved and more people will come out to say, this happened to me, what do I do? Uh, sexual harassment, because it, it's sexual harassment. I'm a dancer, so, uh, but sexual harassment can happen in any workplace. But I feel like in the industry of actors, singers, dancers, photography, models, as you said, it can happen even more because you're in the industry of beauty or of uh, the camera is on you and they think whoever is on the other side, they could take advantage of you. They, they know you depend on that job. What I want to say is, first of all, know that it's not your fault. I can't stress that enough. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Even if you're naked on the shoot, it's not your fault. No one has a right to victimize you. No one has a right to make you feel like a piece of crap, an object, a commodity, a product. No one. I don't care what industry it is. Document it as best as you can. You may be in, not maybe, you, you're going to be in a state of shock, right? Like, like what happened? Did, did this just happen? So recollect uh, exactly what happened, what was said, if you were touched, how were you touched? Uh, take out a piece of paper, put it on your phone, even record it on your... Try to record it as soon as possible because that your your state of mind, your state of the quivering in your voice... Uh, the panic will come through and that will, that will be evidence. You have to know that sexual harassment is taken seriously in the workplace, no matter where it is. Uh, if it's in a, a, a photography studio, a dance studio, an acting uh, um, uh, on stage, uh, behind uh, a closed studio, sexual harassment is taken very seriously and uh really know what your rights are you have the right to report it you have the right to call them out and i find that if you call that person out right away whether it be a director a producer a photographer they're going to be shocked that you're saying something and call it what it is excuse me this is sexual harassment and I have a lawyer ready right on the spot. So they'll be taken aback from that. They're not going to expect that. And that you document everything and, and have a lawyer. Have a lawyer ready to go. Um, and sexual harassment cases are expensive for the owner of the company, for the employer. So they don't want to be in this situation when you're talking money, when you're talking lawsuits. I hope I answer the question. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And you and I love how you give a lot of insight on on kind of the steps that you can take, right? And um things that you can do as far as if you've been a victim. Uh, I think the the follow up question that I have to that now is kind of separating into two, two different, I guess, phases where you know exactly the steps to take, but also what about the mental toll? Like some people get um very anxious, very scared. Um it hurts them very mentally that they don't take those actions. What advice can you give to that for them to kind of get out of that mental toll that they face when, whether it's them being scared or anxiety or things like that, what steps can they take in order to take those next steps that you just mentioned? Right. We are big proponents of therapy at Oh So Safe, uh, whether it be group or one-on-one -on -one or uh, via, if you're more, more comfortable behind a computer typing your feelings, uh, but therapy will help a lot. And I want to say, Isaac, that you may have to try on a few therapists before the right one is a fit. Let that be okay. Because maybe you'll go, you're going to be scared. Like, what the hell am I doing this for? What do I need a therapist for? This is stupid. What if people find out uh, I'm weak, um, uh, I'm strong, I'm better than this? We have a saying at Oso Safe. We have several, and one of them is: "There's no shame in getting help. There's shame in not getting help. You can't do this alone. If you were sexually harassed, if you were attacked in any way, verbally, physically, sexually, on the job, you can't do this alone. It's very traumatizing. 
It's very an invasion of your privacy, of your space. And it's extra, it's the most disrespectful thing you can do on the job. So I want to say, uh, have a therapist. Um, maybe you have to try on a few and let that be okay. It's worth repeating. Um, and that way a therapist can help you through this because you got to get those feelings out. You have to get those scary, uncomfortable, awkward, uh, cry it out. If you have to cry it out, cry it out. It's very, um, you're, you're, it's very invasive what's done to you. And they don't even have to touch you. It could just be words. You're, you're like called, oh, wow, you look so hot. Or, wow, you're a nice piece of chocolate. Or, and they didn't even touch you. But that's very attacking. And they know that. They know that. So you're a perpetrator. So, um, uh, and, and if you don't call it out right away, then they're just kind of moving that line further and further. They think that they could get away with everything and anything. So, um, therapy, uh, know that it's not your fault. You have to repeat that over and over again, especially if you come from violence, you may think that I need this job. I'm so stupid. What did I do to instigate this, to cause this? You didn't do anything. Like I said, even if you were naked on set, if you, I don't know, you have a, you're auditioning for a Vegas job or, uh, you know, where the choreography is risque, nobody has a right to touch you inappropriately, to um, verbally, physically, sexually abuse you. I hope I answer the question. Yeah, and I guess the follow up question that I have now to that is, you mentioned that there's a lot, there's a lot of different like uh, abuses, right? It's not just they don't have to touch you; it's also emotional abuses, mental abuses, things like that. Can you kind of explain to me, kind of like the statistics behind each one and which one actually has the most of the abuses and kind of practices that people can? I think the follow up question to that would be the practices that people can take as far as like if you have been abused in any type of those scenarios, right? Whether it's mental or physical or things like that. What kind of practices can they take to be one more safer, but then also just how they can get out of it or get it, get it out of them? Right. Uh, just some statistics. One out of three women will be beaten or raped in her lifetime. One out of five adolescent girls is abused by her boyfriend. One out of seven men is abused. Uh, by the end of today, four women will be killed by their abusive partners, and most of them will be killed after they leave their abusers. 15 million children witness violence in their own homes each and every year. One out of three young people is in an abusive relationship of some form. Um, in the workplace, I think it's, um, and I have to, I, I have to, uh, I have to double check on this, but something between 40 to 60% of people in the workplace have experienced some form of sexual harassment, which is absolutely mind boggling. Uh, the lawsuits are hundreds of millions of dollars that uh, a perpetrator, a company, an employer could face. Um, so those are just some of the statistics right off the bat. Uh, there are 2 million incidents of workplace violence that occurs in, in, in the U.S. alone. That comes out to be about 33,000 per week. And of those, 17 result in a murder. Uh, it could happen anywhere, really. And I wish that schools and universities prepared, uh, you know, they tell you get good grades and get involved in all of these activities, but they should in, in college or in high school, even before you go into the workplace, into the workforce, you need to be armed with what do you do if you get sexually harassed? What are the statistics? What are your rights? Call them out. Don't be threatened by the fact that, yeah, you need this job. And if I if I say something, then I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to get fired. Well, maybe that's what it takes. And let that be okay. Stand your ground. 
they need to be put in their place, these these employers that do sexual harassment. So have faith in yourself, I want to say, uh, to answer that second part of your of your question as the follow-up. Have faith in yourself that you're going to get another job, that there's going to be a better gig out there, whether you're acting, singing, dancing, or uh, playing an instrument, or a combination of all of those four things. Have faith in yourself that you're going to get a better job, uh, the better gig where you won't be subjected to sexual harassment in any way. Um, and like I said, the therapy can help along the way, you know, so that way you don't wait for something to happen. You already have a therapist on hand to say, look, I need an emergency session with you because I, I just got sexually harassed. Um, uh, I, I had an audition where, uh, it was for Vegas or I think either Vegas or, or maybe Louisiana, New Orleans. And they didn't, I, I don't think they told you on the ad, but they wanted to, for you to go topless at the audition. And I, I did, we all did all of, we, we were all females and we all did, but the one who was running the audition was male and there were other people there and we and this was a number of years ago we all went topless because obviously it was um it was a topless show i believe like kind of a cabaret it was cabaret burlesque and but i don't if i recall they didn't tell you that you were going to be topless for the audition and nothing happened. The guy was respectful, but obviously, I guess he was looking at breasts, obviously, you know, shape, size, what, color, whatever. So, um, and these things will happen. You know, you're on the job, you're, you're auditioning. Uh, but as long as you're, you don't feel creeped out, as long as you don't feel attacked, as long as you don't feel like, wow, uh, I felt really uncomfortable. And and the definition of sexual harassment is no consent of, of any sexual advances, any contact, anything in the context of sexual advances, any quid pro, uh, what is it, quid pro quo, where, okay, I'll give you a promotion or I'll give you this gig if you give me a blow job or if you um i'll i'll pay you extra for this gig if you allow me oral sex or what whatever the case may be what whatever the proposition is um if you feel in any way threatened you're not in the wrong you have every right to exercise your rights and um and they need to be put in their place the Harvey Weinsteins, the Roger Ailes, the, um, uh, there's a great movie, uh, Bombshell, right, with uh, Roger Ailes, and uh, uh, I thought it was r really well done. Um, so I hope I answered the question. Um, this is something that I, I would say it has to be practiced. It, like, let's say maybe you have a friend that could practice with you, like maybe have that friend uh, do some inappropriate advance and then react, you know, kind of do some role playing. So that way you're not freaked out if and when it happens, um, you know, especially if it's the opposite sex, you know, when you have a friend, look, could you just play the perpetrator and, and just, and just, you know, practice standing your ground practice look this was sexual harassment uh practice all of these things because that way if and when it happens you'll know what to do i i want you to i want to see if we can step back a little bit and i want to i want you to share a backstory um uh, most importantly because this is a very important topic and we have a lot of um we have a lot of photographers we have a lot of actors especially watch the show and tune in sometimes uh, we also do Twitter spaces and we talk to people on there and some of them share these stories, right? Of things that happen to them within the industry. And so I want to take a step back. This is a very important topic and especially the the organization that you've built. Why, what, what's a backstory of something that you've been through if if you would like to share 
and then the importance of starting all this and being the advocate for all this? Yes. Um, well, also safe. We are uh, we are combining education and technology to promote safety and prevent violence in the workplace, schools, and in your place of residence. It has to be understood that everything happens in the home. Everything. So when someone is acting violently, verbal, physical, sexually at work, they are a nightmare at home. If someone is acting, if there's a school shooter at a school or university, they are a nightmare at home. So everything happens in the home. So uh, I want to say uh, that I've experienced sexual harassment. Uh, I've experienced violence in the home. As I said, my father beat my mother on a regular basis. My mother would beat me. So it, it's very traumatic. It's And it steals your life. It really messes up with your head. It messes your head because then when good things happen to you, you don't know what to do with that. Like it's almost as if, wait a minute, I'm, I'm being treated right in this relationship. You'll almost sabotage it because you don't know what to do because you've been so conditioned, so programmed to, uh, for negativity, for whether it be verbal, physical, sexual abuse, violence, abuse, chaos, dysfunction. It's almost as if the good stuff you repel, you don't know what to do with it. So I want to say to your to your listeners, actors, singers, dancers, uh, photographers, uh, models. And, and I know because I'm, I'm one of them, like, um, you, you could be a dancer and come from violence. You could be a model and come from violence where you're put down. You're, you, you're told that you're nothing. You're a piece of garbage. You're a bitch, a slut, a whore, a tramp, a sleaze, a flooze, a floozy, a bimbo, a thought, a skank. And all the other lovely titles that are given to us, right? So um, I want to say that uh, with sexual harassment, I I've had it happen to me. I called him out right away. And this was a boss. So it's not like I could have I could have gone to like it was a co-worker. It was the boss, the owner of the company. So it's like... Like, and, and then you go through all of these things in your head, like, don't say anything. I need the money. I need the gig. Um, uh, what if people find out then every, all the fingers are going to point at me. That's all noise. You have to call them out as difficult as it is, as shame. And, and you're not the one who should feel shame. It's the perpetrator. And. And in every, um, I, I, at least it, it, in every uh, scenario that I've been in, there is a human resource department, right? Like all of these uh, uh, photography companies and all of these um, companies that hire actors and singers and dancers. There's HR, human resources. You have to call them. That's what they're there for. And you could say, look, this is very, very difficult, difficult for me. In fact, in New York, and I'm sure across the country, they're required to go through sexual harassment training. Everybody, it's required in the workplace. So, so that way everybody knows you could report it and there's going to be consequences for the perpetrator and they have to be called out on it and it's got to go on record. So that way, when I had it happen to me, Actually, the HR person said, oh, well, he does this to everybody. And I said, and, and she could tell, well, that was not a good thing for me to say. Because, well, how come you didn't do something about it? So how many other women did he do this to? So you have to kind of stop that bad train from going any further and nip it in the bud and call it out and say, look, this is, this is sexual harassment. And, and, and you could just, uh, go through the channels of human resources, consulting with an attorney, 
uh, documenting. Um, you don't have to, you know, blow the horn and say, look, I'm doing this, everybody. No, you you go through the channels privately for yourself and only involve the people that have to be involved, you and the perpetrator and the human resource person, your attorney, and that's it. So um, uh, everything happens in the home and and people need to realize that those people that are attacking you, they're doing this to other people as well. So it's not just you, you know, it's, it's not your fault. It is not your fault. You have to repeat that over and over again. And I also want to say that pornography plays a big role in violence. Pornography. I'm not talking about erotica. Erotica is consensual. Erotica is about having great orgasms. There's no domination. There's no manipulation. That's different. Erotica. What I'm talking about is pornography, which is about bondage, domination, sadism, and masochism. The people that sexually harass, hands down, they're into pornography. So, because pornography blurs those lines, because the more you look at pornography, the more you see that people, your victim is a, an object, a commodity, a product. So it's kind of making it okay to you're, 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 you're a model and you're getting your pictures taken and, you know, and then, oh, they, they touch you inappropriately. They say really demeaning things to you, dehumanizing things. Pornography plays this role, sex trafficking, um, uh, prostitution, sexual favors. It's all kind of a, an evil monster. And I have to say women can be the perpetrator as well, especially if they're a financial dominatrix. Uh, they're really sex abusers, BDSMers, sex abusers. So it's all tied in and it's very important to say on your platform because unfortunately actors, singers, dancers, uh, models, we fall prey to this, you know, because it's just part of our job in a way uh, to be around uh, beauty and the entertainment industry and to be viewed as a commodity, an object, a product. No, no. So I hope I answered the question. Sometimes I go off on a tangent. <laughs> no, no, I, I love it. I love it because you're giving a lot of information. You're giving a lot of details and things that people out there, might, a lot of people are afraid to do it. And I've, I've had a lot of people come out and then talk to me about it. And I've always told them the same thing. I'm like, you can do so and so. You can speak about it. There's there's resources out there. And the resources that you offer as well that can really help somebody get out of that situation. If if you can come up with a, with a checklist for anybody, because... I also don't want people to think that the whole industry is bad, right? You're right. It is the entertainment industry. It is an entertainment industry, but not all of it's bad, right? Um, so if you can come up with a checklist for somebody that can say, hey, these are the things you got to mark off before you work with somebody, what would that checklist look like? Excellent question. Excellent question. And yes, the industry, this happens in every industry. You could be in, in a chemical company, engineering, computers, um, uh, in the hotel industry, uh, a hospitality, uh, you could be in construction. Sexual harassment can happen anywhere. Uh, verbal, physical, sexual abuse can happen anywhere. So, so, um, definitely. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be misunderstood and I'm glad that you clarified that because it's not, a lot of it is good. A lot of it is good. Otherwise, why would all of these actors, singers, dancers, all of us do these movies, get these gigs and do, I mean, if it was all bad, you wouldn't do anything. You would just quit, you know? So, um, but if your boss, your coworker, your, wh whoever it is that you're, you're in the photo shoot and, and, and you're, you're in a closed environment, you're in the studio, you're on stage. And and it always happens very subtle. Like even little jokes, like, or even compliments that are disguised. They're like you, 
it's a compliment, but it made you feel creepy. That's a sign right there that, oh, this may be, this is a red flag. If you're, um, you're touched inappropriately in any way, the hand on the leg, on the knee, on the shoulder, any massages that you didn't ask for, any, um, comp, any, oh, you look so good in that skirt. Like if it gets really specific and you look really good and then, and then, and then it's kind of like masked right away by the perpetrator. These are all red flags. If you are, um, uh, you're being told, um, like I said, it's quid pro quo where if you do this, I'll do that. And it could be really innocent at first. You know, why don't we go out to dinner? Why don't you, first of all, always go because a lot of the times you're meeting directors, producers, um, uh, photographers that, you know, oh, I have my headshot. I have my resume. I have this portfolio always for the, especially the first couple of meetings in public restaurants, um, never go to a hotel. Do not go to the person's house. Do not go to some secluded place. Um, always in a public place, always, uh, make sure that there's other people there. Um, I, I want to say like any jokes and uh, they could be like, like I said, disguised as, oh, oh, he's just being, he's just kidding. And, and then they say that, oh, I was just kidding. That's all red flags, you know? So you have to really follow your instinct because that's going to tell you, wow, that made me feel uncomfortable. That made me feel really creepy. Um, I felt objectified. Uh, all of these things, especially put together, um, if you feel angry, like, crap, I, I feel so victimized. That's because you were. You, you were. So... Um, and it goes back. It goes back to documenting. Consult with an attorney. Um, uh, uh, call them out on it, and 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 have faith in yourself that you're going to get the next gig. Um, uh, and this is a practice. It's a practice. You have to know that you deserve to be safe at home, safe at work, safe at school, safe everywhere. And that means be respected. And like I said, even if the gig calls for nudity, it's respect. It's respect, period, over and out. Um, I hope I answered the question, Isaac. Yes, yes, absolutely. No, and these are really good answers, and I really love it. And, it. and I love how this conversation is very, very informative because this, like, I, I'm, I'm going to stress this a lot that this is a very important subject to talk about. And I have, a, I know a lot of people that it, they, they just, they're, they're scared. They're scared to talk about it, right? So this is very important to put out. You're going to see a lot of micro content about this episode as well, going out there about just advice and things that you've been giving out. Um, I have a three last, three kind of last questions to, to ask you before I let you go. Um, one of them is going to be going just back to the story. Um, I really rely on a lot of relatability when I do these episodes, because when somebody is listening to this, they want to be able to relate or it's something that they've probably gone through. Right. So if, if possible, if it's something that you would like to share a, a situation where how did you over a situation that's happened to you where you, you had to call it and you overcame it? How did you overcome it? What are the steps you took when you overcame that abuse that was given towards you? Uh, I always, um, well, a big one is I put my own father in jail. I was 20 at the time, I believe. I still have the restraining order. I have it. I've saved it. And I use it for speaking engagements. Like I open with that because like, like you said, related relatability, like who is this person? Who does she think she is? Who, like, what, what could she possibly tell me that will help me? I I'm in hell. Um, um, I, I, I witnessed him beat my mother so many times, police coming to the house and just horrible. 
And I remember the police yelling at me. I don't remember, I, I don't remember how old I was, but I remember that distinctly, um, that I felt, I said, oh, the police are here. I'll feel safe. I'll stand up to my father. When I did that, and I don't remember what I said, but the police got into my face and said, don't you dare talk like that to your dad. And I felt like I just got screwed over from the police, you know. But what I want to say is, I told my father, you ever lay a hand on me, I'm going to put you in jail. He didn't believe me. And uh, he hit me right across the face. My mother called the police. The police came and he resisted arrest. He, I think he got, I, I believe, he got violent with them. They arrested him. And I... Uh, we went to court and I went through with the paperwork. I was 20. You know, I wasn't young, young, but I wasn't 30. I was 20, you know, probably the age of many of your models, actors, you know, starting out or, and I was so scared. I was so scared. And I, you know, and I, I remember saying like, Sabrina, how can you do this? You know, but I wanted to teach him a lesson. You, can I curse? I won't curse if I, I could curse. Good for it. Go for it. You are not going to fuck with me. I have watched you beat my mother to no end. I mean, just splitting her lip open, crashing her head against the wall, causing her to be deaf in one ear, pushing her to the ground, pulling her hair, calling her all sorts of names. You are not going to fucking get away with it with me. So I put him in jail and I do not regret it. Not yesterday, not today, and not tomorrow. And it had to be done, Isaac. It had to be done. He had to learn a lesson that you don't put your hands on anybody, especially in the house, in your own home. So, and, and, and I would say that's a big example I would hope that that's a big example of overcoming it. And, you know, and, and I, I don't get me wrong. I didn't feel like, oh, I'm so great. I'll, no, I, I felt bad doing it. Like, how could I do this to my own father? Uh, I felt like a piece of shit uh, at first, you know, maybe. Yeah, I, I, I did. I, I felt like, how could I do this? How? But now I'm older and I'm the more time that passes, the the more I say it was the right thing to do, you, you had to do it. And I stood in the courtroom, we sat side by side, and the judge looks at me and says, are you scared of him? And I said, yes. And my father turned around like this and looked at me with such shock. Like, how could I be scared of him? I mean, he, you know, he put a roof over my head. He, he, uh, fed me, he clothed me. He, you know, that that's his way of, you know, abusers will say that, you know, they, they will say that like, I did this, this, and this for you. So the trade-off is that you hit me or I get to watch you beat up mom and, and both of you fighting. I, I didn't need the clothes. I didn't need the food. I didn't need any of it. Keep it. If that's what it took for you to make me feel safe, I didn't want any of it. Safety is the single most important thing. It's, it's more than basic. You know, if you're not safe, if you're not respected, forget it. Everything else is secondary. So when, when my father looked at me like that in the courtroom, like he, ha it, it just told me how much in denial he was, you know, and how sick he was. And I'm not excusing him, but. I hope my truth it gives courage to your um to to your listeners. I get it. I've been there. I, I'm 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 still there. Uh, in 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 many ways, you know, in different ways, and uh, so I I understand. But what's right is right, and you know what I I want to say, and, and maybe this will answer uh the the other portion of of your question. 
uh, and I, I live by this, sometimes you have to do the wrong thing in order to do the right thing. A hundred percent agreed. Because yes, putting my father in jail was wrong in the sense, but the, it, it was the right thing to do because that wrong thing was minute compared to the right that that was that happened that showed him you don't fucking touch me you you don't you don't put your fucking hands on anybody uh that's no way to live no way to live um all of us deserve to be safe respected and free Absolutely, hundred hundred percent agree. And what I admire, Sabrina, is that the the courage that you had in that moment, the 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 things that you took as a twenty year old. You know, a lot of times it's not normal for a twenty year old to go through that type of stuff. You know, where you have to put your dad in jail and things like that, right? So the courage that you had and and the fight that you went through, I very much admire that. And I know a lot of people that are going to be um listening to this, they they they'll they'll listen to that and they'll see that. And I hope that they do get something out of it where. You know they they can take that leap that they need to take because because you, you are right a lot of this stuff it's that's not right to do it's it's the wrong stuff to do but it's also the right stuff it's, 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 it's need, it needs to get done um so I, I really admire that the last last question that i have or the last two is going to be what is something you knew now that you wish you would have known back then uh i just wish um i wish I guess uh, I, I wish uh, I wish I left home a lot earlier because I was 21 when I left home. But I wish I left a lot earlier, uh, 18. Um, but I was so uh, scared, and money was a big factor. But um, I would have been okay. And because when when you live in that type of atmosphere. Your, your life is stolen. So in any way that you could get back your life, like I would have, I would have left at 18. So I would have spared myself those three, four years of increased suffering. Uh, you know, so yeah, I wish I, I, I had the courage to just leave home at 18. Just like I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm out. What resources do you have just before I let you go as far as oh so safe, anybody that can reach out to you, things like that? Uh, where can they reach out to you? And then also just the resources that you have that they can go ahead and if they are a victim of this, how can they get some resources? Sure, sure. Uh, our website is ososafe.com. Uh, we're on all the social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Um, I started a TikTok and, and a YouTube for uh, mainly for kids, but kids like um, teeny tiny all the way up to high school, through high school. Uh, it's a channel, Oso Safe Kids, and it's, we talk about abuse. We talk about openly. We talk about sex abuse, BDSM, like if you're in that situation. Uh, we talk about what are good, um, what constitutes a good relationship. So uh, that's on uh, TikTok and on YouTube. And I just wrote a children's book. Um, it's on Amazon. It's called Home Safe Home for You and Me. Oh, it, it's in the it's in the video, and um, uh, and it it gives pa it gives voice to children to say who they feel safe with if they're not safe at home. If they're safe at home, they say I'm safe with mom, dad, stepmom, stepdad. But if they're not, then who do they feel safe with when they're ready to say so? Um, and I want to say that we are really working hard at Oso Safe to make homes safe. We have something called Oso Safe certifications, where we are making it into contracts where everybody gets educated. There are therapists assigned to the property and technology to say to detect violence, so that way it removes the he said she said factor. So. It's changing the face of residency and making safety respect a standard. Um, so that's all on the website. Uh, it's all on, I, I talk about this uh, on on podcasts and speaking engagements. So those would be the best ways to reach us. 
Sabrina, thank you so much for being a part of this podcast, being a part of this episode. Everything you shared is very, very valuable. And I'm not, I can't stress that enough. You're probably going to hear me stress it for the last time that what we talked about today is something that is very relatable, something that's very, just everybody needs to listen to and everybody can re, can just, everybody has some type of story that they need to share as far as when it comes to abuse. And so I hope that this episode, if whoever is listening, that they, they take action on it and they take your advice and they can relate to your story. So I appreciate you so much for being on here.